Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm doing another episode of From Book to Movie Adaptation. This is still a very, very brand new series, so please forgive me if I make mistakes, if I don't do so well in this. I'm learning as I go. But yes, other than the From Book to Disney adaptation series that I am doing, where I look at the original source material that inspired the hit Walt Disney animated classic films. But before this, I also looked at the Fear Street books, or at least the first four history books by R.L. Stein and did a vlog style kind of video where I also watched the films, the Netflix films for the first time. So if you want to check out that video I will link it down below. But in today's episode I will be looking at I Know What You Did Last Summer. So I Know What You Did Last Summer was originally a book written by Lois Duncan that was released in 1973. This is a teen mystery book and definitely a far cry from the slasher film that was released in 1997. The film was directed by Jim Gillespie and the screenplay was written by Kevin Williamson who also wrote the screenplay for Scream, which is my favourite slasher film of all time. The movie starred Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Ryan Phillippe and Freddie Prince Jr. And honestly, I had a crush on I think probably all of them to be honest. <laughs> so I had never read this book before and I didn't even realise it was based off a book until a little bit recently, I probably did know it, but I just forgot it. Over. But I have seen the movie, gosh, a dozen times. I love this film. It's probably not the best film, but I think for nostalgia reasons for myself personally, I adore this film so much. And it has one of the best chase scenes in movie history, in my opinion. So in this video, I want to compare them both. I want to tell you what is different, what is similar between the book and the movie. What did the book do that the movie did not? And what did the movie change? Well, I can tell you, the movie is so different. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people will probably already know that, that the movie did take a lot of liberties with this story. Before I continue, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? <laughs> Where's the foot? <laughs> Honestly, Scary Movie has ruined this film for me, not gonna lie. So let's get started with From Book to Movie Adaptation. So if you do not know the story of I Know What You Did Last Summer, it does follow four teens, Julie, Helen, Barry, and Ray. While out partying, the teens go into a car and accidentally run somebody over. And this is kind of already where the movie and the book differ. So in the movie, Ray is the one who was driving the car. Once they realize that they've run an actual person over, they debate whether or not to go to the police. Considering they have been drinking and doing drugs, it's probably a bad idea because they could get done for manslaughter. After some argument, they decide to dump the body in a lake and they make a pact to never mention it again to take it to the grave. Well, you just mentioned it, Greg, starting now. God, that movie. So that is essentially how the movie opens up. Going to the book then, the book actually opens up pretty differently. So in the book we open up with Julie, she's having breakfast with her mum, there is a letter accepting her to college, and she is over the moon. However, there is another letter that comes for Julie, and it's a letter that says, I know what you did last summer. So this is exactly how the book begins. We don't actually see any kind of flashback to what happened straight away. We only get what happened in little bits. It kind of builds up in the first I would say about five chapters painting this picture of what happened last summer and we do go through some of the different characters We do see Helen, Barry and Ray before we get this fully formed picture of the past events I kind of like that in the book though I kind of like the slow build up to finding out what happened Whereas in the movie we do get the whole kind of going on the beach scene where they're talking about urban legends And about the hook which you know in the movie is so effective I love that part of the movie and then we see what happened they run a guy over and dump his body in the river but the book just doesn't want to give you everything straight away which was a really good way of adding tension. Now, obviously I'd already seen the movie so I was kind of already knowing what happened last summer. However I was actually pleasantly surprised by what happened last summer in the book. So as I mentioned in the movie they do run a guy over and dump him in the lake. In the book it's so much worse. <laughs> so in the book, they actually run over a 10 year old boy on his bike. And in the book, it's Barry who's driving, not Ray. And Barry will not go back. Ray decides to give an anonymous call to the hospital to say that they've just run a boy over in the middle of the road. But because they took so long in getting in touch with the hospital, the boy actually died in the ambulance. So if they had just been that little bit quicker, then the boy could have survived. Funnily enough, the boy is the only person who dies in the book. So before I go even further into the plot, I do want to talk about characters. So I guess we should start off with Julie. So Julie in the book is pretty much the same as in the movie. She is very affected by what happened last summer and she really did not want 
to just do the hit and run and leave. She wanted to go back and help that boy, but they just wouldn't let her. And that ate away at her, and she stopped being friends with Helen, with Barry, and her relationship with Ray just crumbled. I should already mention that Julie and Ray were in a relationship, and so were Helen and Barry. So Ray has gone off for a year, and Julie and everyone is still in the town. Whereas in the movie, there was that whole year period where Julie went away to college. Well, in this one, she's just been accepted in the college. She's just distanced her herself from everyone else. She's still in the same town. So that relationship between Julie and Ray is just totally falling apart and Julie is now dating a guy called Bud. So remember that name Bud. It will come up later on. Bud isn't in the movie. But I do feel like the Johnny Galecki character in the movie Max kind of has similar kind of vibes to Bud but it, not the same person. Not the same person at all. So how Julie reacts to the message is pretty much the same in the movie. So she does go to Helen and she wants some help from her. So talking about Helen then, Helen is still this gorgeous beauty pageant winner. She is actually a golden girl in the book. She represents Channel 5 and she does news reports. She's on television and stuff in the uh, town. So it's not like in the movie where Helen, she says she went to New York, she wanted to make it but she didn't. So now she works at the family's department store where Elsa, her older sister, is, oh god, she's just as awful in the book as she is in the movie. Very bitter, very jealous of Helen, and also kind of set up to be a kind of suspect in this case as well. So Helen and Elsa, their relationship is still quite icky, and it's something that I feel like the movie did really, really well. However, Helen doesn't work at the department store like she does in the movie. She has a condo, she is still doing pretty well for herself, and she's still in her relationship with Barry. Now, Barry, he is horrible. <laughs> Barry's probably worse in the book. I mean, he's more violent in the movie, I would say, but in the book, you do get in his mind a bit more, and he is not a great person. He really doesn't want to be with Helen, really. He just thinks it would be a bad idea to not date Helen because she's, you know, on Channel 5 and stuff. And he just has these ideas of other girls, and yeah, he just doesn't love Helen. Whereas Helen, she absolutely idolises Barry. It's a little bit uncomfortable at times, especially seeing how Helen will bend over backwards for Barry, and he just, in his mind, he just doesn't care. And it's something that I think the movie did so much better, was the relationship between them two. It made Barry a bit more human, and the movie made them feel Feel more like high school sweethearts. And you know what, even after the accident, after a year later, even though there's some distance in the movie, you still get the blossoming romance where there is a potential there that they could get back together. But it's something that was way more endearing in the movie than it was in the book. So yeah, Julie takes the note to Helen and Barry and tries to make sense of it. Barry ends up saying some sense and saying like, oh well if they wanted to go to the police they would have done it by now, it's just somebody messing on with them. Or they could have been talking about anything at all. You know, saying that lots of people in the town are pranksters, so, you know, don't pay it any heed. And it does help Julie and Helen kind of feel a bit more safe. And then Ray comes back into the picture, and Ray, like, Ray is weird in the book. Ray meets up with Bud, who is, you know, Julie's date, and says, I'm gonna get Julie back. And he says it so point blank to his face. Yeah, Ray came across as a little bit possessive in the book. So both Barry and Ray just didn't really do it for me in the book. Whereas they felt so much better, so much stronger in the movie. Helen as well. Helen as a character also came across as way better in the movie too. Like she's fallen on hard times. Her glory days are behind her. And she's still trying so hard to reclaim some of that glory. But in the book, Helen doesn't really have a lot to do. Helen ends up meeting Collinsworth Wilson, who moves into her condo and he tries flirting with her but she's like look I've got a boyfriend so don't try that with me but he still ends up trying to be like pretty close with her so the movie counterparts of the characters did have some semblance to the characters in the book they just kind of made them a little bit more friendly for screen I guess and people you would actually root for like I didn't feel myself rooting for well any of the characters really in the book I mean yeah there's just not really that much redeeming about them at all like I don't wish them dead but you know they do some questionable stuff so the first instance of this threat being real in the movie is when Barry is in the shower. Oh, that, that scene where, you know, Ryan Philippe is in the shower and the fisherman steals his car and ends up running him down. That was, that was kind of the moment or almost like a turning point for these characters in the movie 
that this threat was real. I mean, there was Max's death just before that too, but they didn't really know about that at that point. And that doesn't happen in the book at all because Max doesn't exist. So yeah, in the movie, Barry is run over. And in the book, Barry ends up getting a phone call from somebody saying, I know what you did last summer. Look, I've got photos of what happened. I, I've got photos of the car. Come and meet me at this place and you give me money and I'll give you these photos. So Barry goes to meet them. But on the way there, he gets shot through the stomach and the bullet gets lodged in his spine. It isn't a fatal accident. He does end up in the hospital just like he did in the movie. But instead of, you know, Helen and Julie and Ray going to visit him, no one's allowed to visit him but Barry's parents. And Barry's parents are intense, especially his mother. His mother hates Helen. She does not want her anywhere near his son. In fact, she blames her for him being in the hospital because she says that Helen was the one who phoned him and that's what made him go outside in the first place. But Helen swears she did not phone Barry and cause him to go to the field where he got shot. So there is some like tension there and we never ever really see the parents in the movie. We do see Julie's mum at the beginning of the movie, but that's pretty much it. She does have a bigger role to play in the book, which I will also mention a little bit later on. So after the shooting, Julie and Ray end up going to investigate the parents of the boy they killed, whereas in the movie it's Julie and Helen who go to visit the sister of the man they thought they ran over. So in the book they do come to David's parents' house, but the parents aren't there. They're actually destroyed, like the mum is in an asylum I think it was, or a hospital to try and get better after what happened to her son, and the dad has not been around, and so like there's some suspicion that it is, you know, the boy's dad. It was after after them. But it's Megan who is the boy's sister who lets Julie and Ray in and lets them use the phone to phone for somebody to help with the car. Megan tells Julie and Ray a story about her, you know, younger brother and that he would call her sissy. And I can see why the movie had a bit of a nod to that because the Anne Hesh is it Anne Hesh? Anne, the Anne Hesh character in I Know What You Did Last Summer, she is called Missy. So we kind of have the sissy Missy kind of parallel there. So that's what she's inspired from. Julie and Helen do talk to Missy for a bit and find out more about the guy they thought they killed. And Julie does the exact same thing in the book to Megan. In both the movie and the book, Julie is absolutely torn apart by the fact that they didn't just kill one person, they actually destroyed a family. And that really does eat away even more at Julie's conscience. And I thought that was really well done in both. And then this is where the book and the movie just like totally differ. Like it's just not even the same thing anymore. And one of the big things and one of the main things about that is because there is no fisherman in the book. The fisherman plays such a huge part in the Sasha movie and he is, you know, the main killer. We don't know who he is. And, you know, he's been leaving them threats. He's been playing games with them. You know, he cuts off Helen's hair. He ran Barry over. He puts Max's body in Julie's car. So, you know, all of that leads up to the last act of the movie where shit hits the fan. The book is just totally opposite to that. Like, honestly, just so opposite to that. So I'll talk about the movie first because I feel like that might be what people are more familiar with. So in the movie, when Julie's like, what are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? Julie ends up going to Missy again to try and find out more about the person they killed. But it turns out that the person they thought they killed who was Missy's brother, was probably not the person that they ran over. At the same time, Helen and Barry are at the 4th of July parade and Helen is part of, you know, one of the moving floats and they're looking out for the fishermen. And that leads to the talent show that happens every year, which, you know, Helen won the year before. So she's there as like the reigning queen. While there, Barry's in the balcony watching out for Helen while Helen is on the stage, you know, watching the performances. But then she sees the fisherman behind Barry and Barry gets killed. In the book, Barry does not die. In fact, in the book, the last time we see him is when Ray sneaks into the hospital and sneaks into his room to ask Barry more about the shooting, who phoned him and who led him out there. He does finally say to Ray that it was actually just a robbery and it had nothing to do with the previous summer. So it gives them all a false sense of security and Ray ends up relaying this information back to Helen. There is no death he doesn't die. It felt weird. Like, there was pretty much no closure to that. You know, there is a storyline where he might be paralyzed from the shooting, but it looks very likely that he will be able to walk again. So back to the movie for a second then. When Barry is killed, a police officer tries to take Helen home. They have to go through an alley where the fisherman is waiting for them. He kills the police officer, and then we have this incredible chase scene that is like genuinely one of my favorite chase scenes 
ever. I love that chase scene so much. He chases Helen towards Helen's family store where Elsa lets her inside after this really tense moment where she's trying to get the case. I'm just like, Elsa, I probably a fucking arsehole. Elsa lets Helen in. Helen uses the phone to phone the police. Elsa goes to the back to lock the back door, but the fisherman's already gotten in. He kills Elsa. He drags her across the floor as if she was his hand luggage <laughs> and turns off the lights and music. And this leads him to somehow going under this kind of sheet and attacking Helen, and Helen discovers his sister's body, she goes up this pulley lift thing, she ends up jumping out of a window, and actually in the book, Helen does jump out of a window, so I guess that's also similar. But yes, she does go down this alley, and she sees the parade, she thinks she is safe, but boom, the fisherman is right behind her, and he kills her right next to the parade. So close, so freaking close. I do believe that the fisherman would have got her anyway, even if she hadn't made it to the parade. I don't think her turning around to check out that noise made any kind of difference, but yeah, it's still really sad that she ended up dying, because again, she does not die in the book. In fact, I really don't like what happened in the book. Like, there's no tension. This is a thriller. It is supposed to be like a mystery thriller. Maybe eliminate the thriller from that title. But yes, as you can already tell, the book and the movie are just so different at this point that it's hard to talk about both of them at the same time. So let's just go full steam ahead in what happened at the end of the movie for I Know I Did Last Summer. So after Helen is killed, Julie is back in town. She is trying to find Helen and Barry. She runs into Ray and she thinks he is the killer. So when she's getting chased by Ray, a guy comes out of nowhere and boom, uh, whacks Ray and gets Julie on his boat. Well, turns out this man is the killer. He is the one behind it all. And we have this sequence, this boat sequence, where, you know, he goes off out into sea with Julie on board, and he is going through this boat trying to kill her, and Ray is also trying to get back on the boat to save Julie. That's pretty much the climax. They win, and they decide not to tell the police what happened last summer still. So it's like they kind of didn't learn their lesson, almost. So to tell you the identity of the person behind it all in both, I need to pull it back a little bit. So at the start of the movie, we see a guy sitting on a cliff, and this guy is David Egan. And then we don't really see what happens to him, but we do get Julie and the gang running somebody over, and they believe it to be David Egan because his body ends up washing up. Julie said, you know, she read a news report about it, and they believe this person to be David Egan, who they've killed. When Julie tells Missy that they hit David with a car, she says that couldn't have happened because he committed suicide because of an accident that happened the year before that. So David was in a car accident with a girl called Susie Willis, who he was destined to marry, and that tore him apart, and so Missy believed that David was going to commit suicide on that cliff, and that was why he was up there that night. Turns out there's a double plot twist. Double plot twist. So the person that Julie and everyone hit was not David Egan. In fact, it was the father of Susie, Benjamin Willis. Benjamin Willis was on that cliff because he killed David Egan because, you know, David was the one who was driving the car that killed his daughter. So essentially, the teens ended up, well, running over a killer. They didn't actually kill him, but they did run over a killer thinking he was someone else. So the characters at the end of the movie turned out to not actually be killers, which is great for them. So yes, it is Benjamin Willis in the movie, and he is getting revenge on these teens for running them over with the car and leaving them for dead. Wrong place, wrong time for these teens, honestly. So let's go to the book, and the whole third act of the book then, when all the revelations are happening, is again just totally different. Nobody dies, and it's a lot more talk than anything else, to be honest. So when Barry has his change of heart in the hospital and wants to complain about the fact that his attack did have something to do with what they did last summer, he tries to call Helen, but, you know, she isn't there. And when Helen goes back to her apartment, Collinsworth is there waiting for her. And it's Collinsworth who is the one who knew what they did last summer. And he's the one who attacked Barry and all of that. So he ends up telling Helen everything. So the characters in the book don't even work it out for themselves. The movie did such a good job at planting red herrings and clues throughout about things and having Julie kind of work that out for herself and try and, you know, go places so that she can try and pick up on the clues was a really good touch to the movie. But honestly, the characters were just so passive in the book that it's a little bit laughable in comparison how it's worked out. So yes, Helen is in her apartment and Collinsworth just tells her everything. So Collinsworth is actually the half-brother of the 10-year-old boy they killed. And he was in the war, and he came back to the news 
that his brother was dead and he wanted to find out who killed them. And he hated seeing them just living their lives without any consequences. They killed a 10 year old boy, they should definitely face the consequences of that. But there's just no payoff really because in the apartment, Helen ends up running into a bathroom, locking the door, Collinsworth is trying to get in and that's when Helen, you know, jumps out the window. And that's the last we see of her. She's fine, she survived, she doesn't die. And then we go to Julie. So Julie's mum, who does have a much bigger role in the book, is a bit of a psychic, apparently. This is another thing that's just thrown in there. She's a bit of a psychic. So every time Julie's mum has a bad feeling about something, something bad usually happens. So Bud ends up coming over to Julie to take her for a date. But Julie's like, I don't really want to go on this date anymore. My mum's having this like psychic premonition about things being bad right now. So he's like, okay, walk me to the car and say goodbye or whatever. So then she walks him to the car and it turns out Bud is actually Collinsworth. He is the one who is behind the writings and stuff. He's the same person as the Collinsworth who was kind of, you know, flirting with Helen. So yeah, there's this whole double identity thing that honestly would not have worked on the screen at all. So I'm kind of not surprised they changed that. But I guess the movie did try and do that whole David Egan and the Benjamin Willis kind of angle where it was like two different people you thought was one person but it was a totally different person kind of thing. I think that's kind of how the movie gave a nod to that. Yeah, Bud is Collinsworth and he starts strangling Julie and then Ray comes and beats him over the head and that's it. That's pretty much it. The police end up arriving and Ray and Julie end up coming clean about what happened last summer. So that's something that was very different in the movie as well. In the movie, Ray and Julie still are adamant that they don't know why Benjamin is trying to kill them. Whereas in the book, Julie and Ray come clean about the fact that they killed a 10 year old boy. So I kind of like the fact that they did that. That was very redeeming of them. But we don't really get to see what happens next. And we don't really see what happens to Collinsworth. We don't really see any kind of payoff to the consequences. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It just, it's wrapped up like that. There is no big boat scene or like big chase scenes or anything like that. He literally just tries to choke Julie in the middle of her garden just like that and yeah Ray comes and bats him off the head and Ray did know something bad was going to happen because Barry had said to him and come clean about the fact that his shooting did have something to do with what happened last summer. So these two are just entirely different things. They have the same premise, they have the same characters but honestly it just divulges so much so that this does become a slasher and this is more of a slow burn mystery than anything else. And I do appreciate this for what it is. It came out in the 70s. I believe this was modernized by the author herself back in 2010, I think, to kind of change the clothing, to give them cell phones, I think, and kind of stuff like that was updated. But the story remains the same. The plot, everything still remains the same. This was made for the big screen. This is a slasher film. I mean, I will always have a special place in my heart for this one. Honestly, it was one of my favorites growing up. So yeah, I will always prefer this one to the book. I was hoping there would be a bit more death in this. There was only one death and that was the boy that the teens ended up running over. So the movie did a poor job at adapting it but I don't think the movie wanted to adapt the book to be honest. I think it really needed to do its own thing. It had to change so much of it to make it more friendly for the screen and make it more of a visual experience. And while this isn't as good as Scream, it's still one that I think is just such a fun time and just there's so much I love about it honestly even through all the flaws and the plot holes and all of that. That. I still think this is a really solid film. So yeah, I, I still really enjoy it. So that was episode two of From Book to Movie Adaptation on my channel. And it was really fun having a deep dive into I Know What You Did Last Summer. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do plan on doing way more videos like this where I look at the original books that inspired hit movies. Leave a comment, let me know if you enjoyed the I Know What You Did Last Summer movie. If you read the book, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!